Praise the Lord. I bring you greetings from our senior pastor, Pastor David Opara, who is not here with us this morning, but is somewhere watching us online. <laughs> and I want to say thank you, Pastor, for this great opportunity to, to stand in your platform to deliver the Word of God this morning. I count it as a privilege. And I do not take it for granted. Somebody, can you please clap for Pastor? You know, when Pastor told me that I was going to be sharing the word, I said, Ha, if you have a good teacher, please don't mess me up. <laughs> because you teach so well that it's almost impossible, you know, to want to teach the way you teach. But he said something to me. He said, look, you don't have to teach the way I teach. You just have to teach the way the Holy Spirit tells you to teach. I said, okay. I said, if I mess up, well, I'm messing up in your name. <laughs> Praise God. So thank you, Pastor. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for being here this morning. Thank you for coming to worship God with me. Thank you for enjoying Jesus. How many of us know that Jesus is enjoyable? Jesus is enjoyable. Really. There is no other place to be other than being in the presence of God. So this morning I'll be bringing you a word that says entering into the rest of God. The topic is entering into the rest of God. This is our month of rest. Our month of rest. November, our month of rest. So entering into the rest of God. Now, we don't just want to rest from our physical labors, but we want to know what it is to enter into the rest of God. Somebody say a prayer this morning. Say, I enter into your rest, Lord. I rest from my own works. I rest from my own strength. I rest from my own labor. And I enter into your rest. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. So, We'll be taking our Bible reading from the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, from verse 1 to 11. Hebrews, chapter 4, from verse 1 to 11. Can we turn our Bibles there? The projector is coming up, okay. So I'm going to read from here. Hebrews, chapter 4. From verse 1 to 11. Therefore, since the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us be careful that none of you be found to have fallen short of it. For we also have had the good news proclaimed to us, just as they did. But the message they heard was of no value to them, because they did not share the faith of those who obeyed. Another translation says in that point, they did not mix it with faith. Now we who have believed enter that rest, just as God has said. So I declared an oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. And yet his works have been finished since the creation of the world. For somewhere... He has spoken about the seventh day in this word. On the seventh day, God rested from all his works. And again, in the passage above, he says, there shall never, They shall never enter my rest. Therefore, since it still remains for some to enter that rest, and since those who formerly had the good news proclaimed to them did not go in because of their disobedience, God again sets a certain day, calling it today. This he did when a long time later he spoke through David, as in the passage already quoted. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken later about another day. There remain then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from his works. 
let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will perish by following their examples of disobedience. Praise God. So this morning, we'll be talking about entering into God's rest. From the passage that we read, we saw that... Okay, let me start from... This passage talks about the children of Israel. Okay, when they were in exile for 40 years. Now, God didn't want them to stay that long. But because of unbelief and because of disobedience, they stayed that long. Now, Hebrew is telling a story from another perspective of what God really wanted for them, which was to enter into the place of rest. But they did not understand. They thought that it was going to be by their own efforts. So they kept looking at what was in their surrounding, what was in their environment. And they never looked up to God. So now, God is saying to you and I today, that although we have disobeyed, although we have not understood the purpose of God for us, which is to enter into His rest, that there is still a chance for us today. He said, today, if you will hearken to my voice and do not disobey and believe, you will do what? Enter into that rest. Now, we want to know what that rest is. What is that rest that God is calling you and I to enter into today? For we know that unrest comes from disobedience. Unrest comes from unbelief. But rest comes from believing. So God is calling you and I to enter with into his rest. So if we go to dictionary meaning of rest, who will say rest is when you cease from your labor or from your work. Am I correct? English students, dictionary meaning of rest when you see from your label. But the rest that God is talking about here is not the rest of physical label, ceasing from your physical label. It's the rest of the finished work of Jesus Christ. It's the rest of what God has completed from the foundation of the world. Now let's Go back to the illustration of creation. Remember that the first day God created heavens and earth from the first to the um, fifth day. He created heavens and earth, stars, moon, everything, the animals. And on the sixth day, he did what? He created who? Man. He created who? Man. Why didn't God, the question is, why didn't God create man on the first day? So that man will help him to finish up the other creation. Have you thought about that? God did not create man on the first day. God had done everything. And on the sixth day, he now created man. And on the seventh day, what did he do? He rested. So man started from the point of what? Rest. So I'm sure man would have woken up, they created him on the sixth day and woken up on the seventh day and he's like, God, what do you want me to do today? And he's saying today, I'm resting. Can't you see I'm resting? So what are you supposed to do? Rest. Now don't get confused. Rest is not for you to be passive or for you to be idle. But rest is entering into the complete work of Christ. When Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, what did he say? He said what? It is finished. The work that you have sent me to do, I have done what? Completed it. Now, you and I are working from the standpoint of what Jesus has already completed. We are starting from the place of rest. If we go through the Bible, we'll see that God's original intention for man was for man to rest. Not rest from not doing physical labor. Now we are talking about rest in the realm of the spirit. Now I'm going to explain what rest is. For man to rest. So when the devil caused man to doubt and disobey God, 
God still brought man back to that place of rest. Through who? Jesus Christ. So what does it really mean to enter into God's rest? To enter into God's rest means to enter into confident trust and total reliance in God. Confident trust and total reliance in God. You come to a place in your life where you say, God, I totally trust you. I totally rely on you. I totally release. The Bible said, cast all your burdens. For he does what? He cares for you. Where you, where you cast everything and say, Lord, I totally rely on you. That's what rest means. Another, um, another thing that rest means is... Okay. So, um, yes, confidence. So that so we're entering into, God, into God's um, presence with confidence. Let's open our Bible to Hebrews 4, 16. It says, let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in time of our need. So another, um, what, another meaning of rest is confidence, confidence in God. Hebrews 13, 6 says, so we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? So confidence, confidence, trust. Entering into rest means what? Confidence, it means trust in the Lord. Entering into rest also means the highest form of faith that any believer can exhibit. The highest form of faith. What is faith? The evidence of things hoped for. You've not seen the evidence, but you're hoping for it. That is rest. That point where you are hoping that even though I've not seen this thing manifest, let's say you're believing God for a child, and you, you've not seen the manifestation of that child, but you have gotten to the point in your heart where you believe the word of God that says that there shall none be barren amongst us. And you enter into that place. That place is rest. So the highest form of faith that, that any believer can exercise is rest. A, a good example is the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When they were about to be thrown into the fire, they said, we know that our God is able to deliver us. He said, but even if it doesn't change anything, that's what rest. The point where you know that God is able to do. You know, now there is something that had, um, I had struggled with for a long time. And I know a lot of believers are still struggling with it. We, how many of us believe that God is able? We know, right? He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ever think of or imagine. When we have a sick relative, we say, God, we know that you're able to heal, right? You're able to deliver. How many of us really believe that God will? That's the point. We all know that God is able. But rest is in the place where you know that God is willing. That God is what? Willing. He's not just able. You don't just say, oh, I know that God loves me. Oh, I know that God is capable of loving me. He's capable of protecting me. He's capable of seeing me through. It's for you to get to the point where you say, I know that God will see me through. They are two different things. The place where you feel that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly. And the place where you know that God will do exceedingly abundantly for me. That's the place of rest. The place of rest. It means to completely trust in the finished work of Jesus. Jesus said, it is finished. And when Jesus said, it is finished, he wasn't talking about our sins alone. He wasn't talking about our sins alone. He was also talking about your healing. He was talking about your prosperity. He was talking about everything that you will ever trust him for and believe him for. He finished everything at the cross of Calvary. That is why as Christians, we walk from the place of victory. We don't walk into victory. We walk from where? From the place of victory of what Christ has already done. Of what Christ has already done. 
There is rest for every area of our life. There is rest for provision. Where you say, for God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. There is rest for your business. Where you will say, God will bless the works of my hands. Irrespective of whatsoever is going on around your circumstances. Irrespective of how much the dollar is. Irrespective of how it is hitting your business, how it is affecting your business, you get to the point where you say, I know that my God will supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Somebody say that prayer. Say, God will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So it doesn't matter when you look at your store. And you see that maybe you have just one cup of, of, of grain there. And you don't know what you're going to eat the next day. You will say, I know that God will supply all of my needs. That is the place of rest. Where you know that God will not let you down. Where you know that everything you need for life and godliness has been what? Has been given unto you in Christ Jesus. That is the place of rest. Somebody shout hallelujah. So we have to keep engaging. You have to keep engaging in your business. You have to keep engaging, irrespective of whatever is happening. You have to keep posting that business advert. Even if you don't have one customer, you will not stay in the place of, oh, I don't have customer today. Oh, I didn't have customer yesterday. But you have to keep engaging. And you have to keep speaking faith-filled words to say, God is going to bless the works of my hands. Even though I can't see it in my surrounding now, but I know that there is increase for me. There is increase in my finances. Even when I look at my bank account, and it's looking, it maybe it's in zero, or for some people, maybe it's in 1,000 because the bank might not let you get to zero. And, and, and you're saying, it doesn't matter if this, if this money is not enough for me to do anything. I know that God is my provider. He will not let me get to the point where there will be no way for me. Because he's the God that makes way in the wilderness. And he's the God that gives us rivers in the desert. So begin to pray this morning. Somebody begin to pray. Begin to pray and say, I know that my God will meet me at the point of my needs. I know that my God will meet me at the point of my needs. Open your mouth and begin to pray. So for someone who is looking for a job, you won't just sit down and say, oh, I don't have a job. Oh, I don't have nobody. I'm, I'm not, no, nobody's calling me for an interview. No, 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 no. You will stand up and you will, you will clean up your shoes. Oh, this is what I studied. I'm looking for a job. Somebody. But you're engaging not because it is your strength that is going to provide that thing. You're engaging because you have come to the point where you know that God is able. That's the place of rest. That's why we walk not from the place of labor, but from the place of victory, from the place of faith. So when I step out, I am not stepping out because I know that it is my hand that will provide this job. But I'm stepping out because I know that God has said in his word. He has said in his word, in his word. Pastor always says something like, what is your title deed? What is your anchor scripture? What is your hope alive scripture? That when you run into that situation, you will go to that word and draw strength. Now, I want to give us, um, just tell us a little story. When I was looking for a placement for my internship, now I really wanted to do my internship in, in Lagos, but I didn't know anybody. I didn't know anybody in Lagos. So I kept praying. I kept praying. You know, I got a scripture. I can't even remember what that scripture was, but I got a scripture and I kept, kept confessing. I kept confessing that scripture. I kept confessing that scripture. And I was also engaging. I would gotten to the point in my heart where I knew that I didn't know anybody in Lagos. But I was going to get an internship in Lagos. Because I know who? God. And he's the one that sits in the what? In the hems of affairs. He's the one that will connect me to the person that will connect me to the person that will connect me to the person that will give me the internship that I was looking for. 
So I began to put out applications. I began to write all the exams. And then I would encounter people that would tell me, oh, I have one uh, aunt here. I have one uncle here. Or oh, the list would come out and I wouldn't see my name. They would tell me, oh, my aunt did this for me. Oh, my uncle did this for me. And I went home one day and I said, God, I don't have uncle, aunt, a relative or anybody, but I have you. And I know that not, you're not just able, but you will. Because this is what the Bible said. He will grant the heart desires of who? Of the righteous. So I wrote so many exams. I applied to loot. And then one faithful day, I stood up and I told my sister, I said, I don't want to be staying in the house. I just want to go and do a voluntary job somewhere. And she was like, okay, that's fine. You can." So there was this laboratory very close to our house. I just walked in there and I told the manager, I just said, I wanted to do the manager. They said, okay, oh, that he's around. So I went in and I said, I wanted to do a free work. This is what I studied. I just finished from school. I've not gone for internship, and I've not done my youth service, but I just wanted to practice. So he said, you don't have any license, so we can't employ you, but you can be coming around. I said, okay, no problem. So every morning, I would dress up, and I would go out. I would go there. I would just, you know, work with them, observe them, help in the little ways that they could allow me to help. And one day, he called me. He said, this is your internship you've been talking about. Where and where have you applied? I said, I applied to Lutz, I applied to Chevron, I applied to so many places. He said, oh, you applied to Lutz? I said, yes, sir. He said, he just brought out his um, complimentary card and he wrote something. He said, go to Lutz tomorrow. He said, give this to so and so person. Just tell him that I sent you. So I just, I went there. The next day, I went to Lutz. I written the exam. The first list had come out. My name was not there. Now they said there was another list going to come out where we're not sure. And then I went there and I gave the man. The man said, oh, oh, you know this man? I said, I said yes, sir. He said, oh, okay, 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 don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Okay, that's fine. And then this, the next Sunday I went to church. We, we, um, on Saturday I went to church and during choir rehearsals, the music director said, oh, Lydia, can you get me more? So I was like, sir, I don't have money now. You know I'm looking for internship. He said, ah, you're looking for internship? I said, yes, I said, what did you apply? I said, I applied in loot. He said, ah, loot. He said, sit down, mama, there now. She's a matron in Lutz. She just retired last week. Go and meet her. She's a sister to the CMD. I was like, eh. I just went to the mama. I said, ah, Lutz. She said, ah, I'm going to CMD's office on Monday. What's your name? That's how I gave her my name. I don't know what happened. The next thing I knew was that two weeks later, I don't know from where, but two weeks later, my classmate called me. He said, Lydia. He said, where are you? I said, I'm at home. He said, you are at home? He said, are you serious? I said, what happened? He said, the admin just came carrying your file and they've been calling your name everywhere. They said, if I, did, she said, if I don't see this person that owns this file today, I'm going to trash it. I said, which file? He said, file for intensive where? I said, look, I did not take my bath. I just rushed. <laughs> when I got there, you know, when I got there, I, I, honestly, I don't know from where, but I know that God did it. When I got there, I just went straight to the admin's office, and then they gave me, she said, ah, he said, I don't know what moved me. He said, normally, I don't go about looking for intent. People were supposed to be coming to check your name, but I don't know what moved me. I just said, I needed to just go around and call in all the departments for this person, that maybe somebody somewhere will know her. And that was how someone somewhere in, uh, in that department knew me, and she just put a call through to me. And that was how I started my internship. Praise the Lord. So... I want to tell you that God's word works. You don't need to know anybody. Sometimes we say, oh, I need to know somebody. You say, oh, so I don't have connection. No, listen, you don't need connection. What you need is the word of God. What you need is the what? Is the word of God that you put on your lips. I remember then, anywhere I'm going to write those exams, I have this small jotter. I have scriptures that I have put down, and I keep confessing. I say, God will favor me today. Doors are open for me. Now, in so many of those places, I didn't, it didn't come the way I had planned it. It didn't come the way I had wanted it to come. But it came because God moved me. God moved me to go and do what, do a free service. God moved me, you know, to, to, to choir rehearsals that day. I could have just been in the house. So, God's word works. There's rest for healing. There's rest for that job you're trusting God for. There's rest for restoration. Everything that you think you have lost. When you think, oh, that's, oh, I don't, I, there's nothing for me. But God is telling you there is what? Rest for you. One of the things that God laid in my heart this morning that he was going to do it was, is that he's going to bring restoration. Restoration. 
Restoration for everything that is seemingly lost. Restoration for the things you call the opportunities that you think you missed. For someone here today, you think probably, oh, there is this opportunity that I missed. If only I had done this. If only I had gone here. If only I had been in this place at this time. Maybe my name would have been listed. Maybe I would have been the one called. Maybe I would have been somewhere today. Maybe for someone who wants to travel, maybe I would have been in this country today. And you're blaming yourself. But God is telling you this morning that there is restoration for you. Somebody say, I received my restoration. I received my restoration. Rest is another word for faith. The Bible says faith comes by hearing. Rest comes by what? Meditating on the word of God. Because when you meditate on the word of what is meditation? When you keep your eyes on the word and you are reading that word and you are thinking about that word and you are processing it in your heart and you are putting it in your mouth. That is meditation. Rest comes from that. When you, when, when you see that there's a physical disability in your body, you know that, look, the doctors have said that there is nothing that can be done about this. And you say, look, I'm not going to follow the doctor's report. I am going to follow the report of the Lord. Whose report will you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. You will say, I will not follow the doctor's report. I will follow the report of the Lord. And you take your Bible and you say, by his stripes I am healed. I know that by his stripes I have been made whole. I know that the healing wings of righteousness is upon me. I, I know, you know, you keep putting that word in your mouth. You keep thinking about it. When you're meditating, when you, when, when, when you, when, when the, the, the devil tries to throw doubt out you, the devil tells, reminds you and say, the doctor said, there is no way in this, in this, you know, I and you tell the devil, but by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. Rest comes from that place of meditation. When you keep the word of God in your mouth, when you put that word, the Bible said the word of God is life. The word of God is life. When you put that word in your mouth, you get to the point in the middle of the night when the devil tries to wake you up with worry. And you open your eyes and your heart wants to start beating so fast. And you tell the devil, you look, ha, but I know Jesus has taken care of this. So Jesus has taken care of my problems. He has taken care of my problems. Somebody make that your prayer this morning. What is your anchor scripture? What is your title deed? The word of God can only profit you when you mix it with faith. So many times we quote, I've quoted scriptures that didn't work. Yes. I didn't mix them with faith. Maybe because somewhere behind my, some, my thoughts, somewhere, I was thinking that, look, it is by my strength that this thing will come to pass. It is only when you come to the point of rest, the point of belief, the point of faith, where you miss the word of God with faith, that you will do what? Find rest. Put that word on your lips. Somebody needs to put God's word on your lips. I want to give you a minute right now. Just think upon, think upon the scripture that relates to something you're trusting God for. It could be healing. It could be restoration. It could be finance. It could be provision. It could be prosperity. It could be anything. Just take a minute right now and begin to mutter that scripture under your breath. And begin to speak life. Begin to speak life right now. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Begin to speak. Say, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. If you're believing God for healing, say, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. If you're believing God for provision, say, God has supplied all my needs. If you're believing God for restoration, say, everything has been restored unto me. Everything that the canker wants and the palmer wants. Begin to look at that situation in the face right now. And begin to say that prayer. I want to give you one minute right now to put that word of God in your mouth and speak the word of faith. Are you believing God for a child? The Bible said none shall be barren. Begin to speak the word. Begin to speak the word. Maybe you look at your age and you say, oh, is this still possible? But there was one woman that gave birth at 99. Hallelujah. What do you say to yourself? What you say to yourself can only come from the place of rest. What do you say to yourself? We can only speak faith if we are filled with words of faith. If we are filled with doubt, we cannot speak faith. Now, the Bible said that in the book of... Um, can we look at that scripture in King James Version? King James Version. 
Hebrews 4. Let's look at verse 11. Verse 11. It says, Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of what unbelief. Let's take note of that word. Labor to enter into rest. Labor to enter into rest. When we labor to enter into rest, we are not laboring. You know, some people believe that, oh, that faith is the stronging of my mind. When I just strong my mind and say, ah, oh, rain will not fall today, you just strong your mind. Anything that is trying to bring that to say, no, I'm stronging my mind. No, that's not faith. Faith is rest. Where you rely only on what God has said. Where you rely only on what the Bible has said. That is the, the revealed word of Christ to you. You rely on it and say, because God has said this, I will rest. Even if the clouds are changing, you are not perturbed. When the devil tries to bring doubt, you will say, the word of God said this. That is laboring. You know, it takes a lot of energy for us to keep away doubt. To keep away worry. That's the label. Because the easiest thing for you to do is to do what? Worry. The easiest thing for you to do is to do what? Fret. The easiest thing for you to do is to do what? Be anxious. So that energy that it takes you to keep away doubt, to keep away worry, to replace those thoughts. Bible says, think upon whatsoever is pleasant of good report, whatsoever is good. So think upon those things. Replacing your thoughts with the thoughts of God. That is the labor. The Bible said in Hebrews 4, 11, say, labor to enter into what? Rest. It takes effort to keep your thoughts in what God has said. To keep doubt and anxiety and worry away. The only thing required of us is to labor to enter into rest. So now let's talk about what are the disturbers of rest. Those things that we labor about. We don't labor for faith because faith is already a finished work. You just get to the point through the word. Now we labor because of this disturbance of what? Of our rest. One of it is worry. The Bible said in the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 25. There's this song. Who knows it? Why worry when you can pray? Trust in Jesus. He knows the way. If you know, join me. Don't be a doubting Thomas. Just put your faith in Jesus. Why worry, worry, worry when you can pray? Who knows it? Let's sing it together if we do. Why worry when you can pray? Trust in Jesus, He knows the way. Don't be a doubting Thomas, just put your faith in Jesus. Why worry, 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 when you can pray? Ah, it just shows that I was the only one that attended. Let me just keep it like that. Ah, you didn't go to children's church. Eh, okay, oh, my mom used to carry me every day to children's church. That's where we learn the song. Why worry when you can pray? Matthew 6, 25. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Worry. One of the disturbers of our rest. One of the things that makes us doubt. And the Bible is telling us, and God is telling you today. He said, do what? Do not worry. It's easy not to worry. <laughs> you know those kind of words. Just imagine you are owing your house rent, 1.5 million. And the landlord has, landlord has given you grace. He has called you and he said, um, I'm giving you one month to raise this money and pay. And one month has passed. And we are now, and he has told you that if you don't pay within one month, he's coming to eject you. And you know that landlord can come any moment. Hmm. How many of us, honestly, can sleep and close our eyes? And you've looked around, there is no way. You know physically possible that you know that that money will come from. Is it easy? 
It's easy not to worry at that point. But the Bible is saying, <laughs> at situations like this, that you should not worry. That you should do what? Rest. If God had wanted you to worry, to join Him in worrying about how to take care of your needs, He would have created you on the first day of creation. So that you would join Him in creating star, moon, everything. Since you want to walk. But He created you on the last day when He had done everything. And He created you to start from the starting point of rest. And He's saying, why do you worry about the food you will eat? Why do you worry about the clothes you, you wear? Why do you worry about the house you will live in? Why do you worry about the things? He said, don't worry. He said, have taken care. I feed the birds. I clothe them. I take care of them. They look more beautiful even than the most. You know, Solomon in all his radiance, the best look more beautiful than him. Have you seen the different colors? How God, act, act, you know, actually created those animals. There's no, if you're a color mixer here, <laughs> there's no way you will mix color that you will mix, you know, to really bring out the beauty. Do you understand? God created these things and He says, I take care of them. He said, how much more you, who I created in my own image and in my life likeness. I created you just to be like me. I have special preference for you. Now the devil came to distort our mindset to tell us that look God doesn't love us that is the lie from the pit of hell because if he created you in his own image and likeness to have dominion and authority above every other thing in their magnificence in their beauty that he created and he's telling you why do you worry all you need to do is to cast that care. Cast that your landlord and the rent unto the Lord. And take a scripture like, The heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord. He directs it whichever way he pleases. You put those words in your mouth. And you will wake up the next day and the landlord will tell you. He will call you and say, Oh, you know what? I'm just giving you another six months. Because I know that the economy is hard. And I know that you are a good tenant. And I know that you are going to pay. And then you will see God open doors for you in ways that you least believe. And you will see that that's your need is being met. All you need to do is just to rely on God enough to let go. But the thing is that we are so afraid to let go. Because we believe that when we let go, we'll crash. It's not better to let go in the hands of God than to hold on and you still crash. So why not just let go? Why not just let go? I've been married for five years. There is nothing to show for it. Why not just rely on God and say, Father, I know that your word has said. And I stay with your word. Even though there is nothing shaking in my environment, but I stay with your word. Because whether you, let, whether you, you, you rely on God or not, people will still laugh at you and say, Oh, this woman, she's barren. So instead of staying there in the place of pity, in the place of worry, in the place of crying every night and saying, Oh God, my mother-in-law is doing this one to me. My friends, oh, look at my friend that just got married yesterday. Oh, she has a child. Look at me. I've said five years. It takes a lot of energy. Instead of doing that, why not just rely on God and stay in the place of rest and say, God, I know that you are able and that you will do this thing for me. That is the labor, the labor of entering into the place of rest. The labor of entering into the place where you know that God will do it for me. The labor of entering into the place where you have cast out every worry, every anxiety. The Bible said, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for what? For nothing. He didn't say for some things. He said for nothing. That means there is nothing. No matter how hard, no matter how tough, no matter what it is, be anxious for what? For nothing. Anxiety is one of the things. Doubt. Say truly I tell you, if you have faith and do not doubt, not only can you do what was done to this victory, but also you can say to the mountains, go and throw yourself into the sea and it will be done. If you believe, you will receive whatsoever you ask for 
in prayer. The disturbance of our rest, of our faith, is one is worry. The second one is anxiety. The third one is doubt. If you can labor to take all those things out from your rest, you will see that you will enter into the rest of God. The highest point of your faith, where you can exercise faith in the word of God, to know that, look, things don't change. Let me tell you, for how long that I have walked in faith, I have never seen things change in my circumstances. I've never seen the faith. Faith does not move from my environment. Faith moves from the inside of me. And when I take a step, my environment will begin to, 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 to pave way. Things don't work from the outside. Things work from your inside. Do you know why? Because the Bible said that that same spirit, somebody said that same spirit, that same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Hold your chest. So that same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives and dwells on the inside of me. It lives and dwells on the inside of me. Because it's on the inside of you. You see, faith comes from the inside. The manifestation comes from the inside. He said that the, the Godhead dwell in him bodily. And who? And Christ is in what? Is in me. That means as I walk, I'm, I carry Christ. You might not see it. But I, I have the life of Christ on the inside of me to change any situation. I have the life of Christ on the inside of me to move that mountain. It is not my words that are moving the mountain. It is the word of life that is generated from the inside of me. For out of my belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living water. Put your hands on your stomach and say it. See, out of my belly shall flow rivers of living water. Begin to make that your prayer this morning. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Say, out of my belly shall flow rivers of living water. If you can pray in the spirit, begin to pray. Say, out of my belly shall flow rivers of living water. Out of my belly. It doesn't matter what circumstances. I have faith generated on the inside of me that is going to change my environment. I do not look at my environment to move, but I look at the life of God on the inside of me to move my environment. Listen. It is not our prayers or our fasting that moves the hand of God. The hand of God has moved already. What they do is that they move your own hand. So reach out and take what God is giving you. So many of us think it is when we pray seven days, and they are giving testimony. They say, when I fasted for seven days, uh, the hand of God moved. No, 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 no. The hand of God has moved. The Bible said, I have given to you everything that pertains to life, uh, to life and to godliness. The hand of God is moving. You see that car you are believing God for? God is holding the key. Uh, and he's saying, look, I just need you to stretch forth your hands right now and reach out by faith uh, and take that thing which I have given to you. But somebody is still things that look I need to pray to move the hand of God no God has moved he has finished it the work is complete it is done it is left for you and I to begin to appropriate that which Christ has already done look what fasting and prayers and spiritual exercise do for us is that they align us they align us they help us to begin to meditate on the word. When you study the scripture, you begin to see what God is saying. When you pray, you begin to deny yourself. And you know you have focus. And you begin to say, oh God. You reach out to God. And God begins to reveal himself to you. Look, he needs to bring you to the point of a revelation where you need to see. That that which you are looking for is already there. He said to Abraham. As far as your eyes can see, I will do it. I will give unto you. And God is saying to you, to you, to you, to you today, as far as your eyes can see. Oh, I'm not qualified. I didn't go to the university. I won't be able to work in that company. As far as your eyes can see. Oh, no. I didn't come from a rich family, so they are not going to accept me in that job. As far as your eyes can see, what if somebody stands 
up and say, I don't know anybody in Lagos, but I'm going to get an internship in Lagos. I don't have an uncle or an auntie, but I know that God is going to make a way for me. Look, God is going to connect somebody to connect to somebody and do the network for you to get that thing that you're believing him for. All you need to do is to see. And how do we see? We see from the revealed word of God. That is what your prayer, your fasting will do for you. Your meditating on the word will bring you to the point of revelation where you begin to see. You, see, you begin to see. You don't see the letters anymore. You begin to see life. You begin to see, ah, when Jesus says by his stripes I'm healed. Ah, that means ah, I can never be sick. Ah, when you hear some preachers say, I have never been to the hospital. Look, it's not because sickness has not come. It is because they have come to the point of revelation where they know where they know that by his stripes I have been made whole. I carry Jesus on the inside of me for Christ and me. He says, oh, when you have Jesus, ha, your physical body, that same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives and dwells on the inside of me and that same spirit has quickened my mortal body. That means that there is the life of God picking in your mortal body. Nothing can go wrong with your mortal body because there is an activation of the very essence of the life of God flowing on the inside of you. And best me, you can take that in your finance. You can take that in every area of your life. And you begin to look at that devil in the face and say, look, you have messed up with me for so long. But you know what? Right now, I am not going to let you mess up with my finances anymore. I am going to so take charge. You won't mess up with my business no more. I take charge. Somebody begin to take charge right now. Think about that situation. Take charge. Is it your health? Take charge. Is it your job? Take charge. Is it your finances? Take charge. Whatsoever it is, take charge. And say, look, devil, enough is enough. I cast you out of my business. I cast you out of my health. I cast you out of my job. I cast you out of my life. I cast you out of my family. So many of us have been living in the fear of generational causes and bondage. And you say, oh, my family is cursed. Nobody progresses in my family. Look, look, you are of a different bloodline. You are from the bloodline of champion. For the Bible says that there is therefore now no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Therefore, there is no more condemnation for you. It doesn't matter the sins of your forefathers and the causes that are in your family. But because you have given your life to Jesus because you are of a different breed. There is therefore now no more condemnation for you. All you need to do is to stand up and say, I have been delivered. I have been set free. I have been delivered. There is no condemnation for me. Nothing can go wrong with me that it happened to my father. It will not happen to me. That it happened to my mother. It will not happen to me because I am different. You are different. You are different. Say, I am different. I am different. The hand of God is stressed out, waiting for you to reach out, to take that which He has given to you. It might be, you know, for some people who have some deformity that it might look like physically is not possible. Do you know? That everything that you are trusting God for has been released. All you need to do is to stretch forth your faith. Reach out and take hold of it. Take hold of it. Put the word of God in your mouth. You put that word in your mouth. And when the devil tries to mess up your environment, to remind him of the word, let me tell you, the labor, the fight, is in keeping those doubts away because they will come. You will come out from a faith-filled service like this with the word of God, you're charged up. And as you're going, the devil will remind you that, look, there's no food in the house. The devil will tell you, ha, you just came out from church, so excited. But you know when you're going home right now, there's no food in the house, right? You're going to be hungry. And you're going to tell the devil that the Lord has supplied all of my needs. You remind the devil. And you will rely, rest in that word of God. Trust in God. Look, the, 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 God, the Holy Spirit will begin to put ideas in your heart. 
Maybe he will say, call somebody. Oh, maybe he will say, visit somebody. Maybe he will say, oh, pass this road. And then you will just pass. And then you will see somebody and say, ah, I've been looking for you. Hey, you mean you have been in this Lagos since, ah, you know, okay, okay, okay. Take this, you know. Let me give you a testimony. I came out from a family of civil servants. My dad is a retired police officer. Now, he was so used to civil service that he didn't know how to do business, right? And then when he retired from civil service, he invested all his money into building material business and the thing crashed. And then we were all grown, you know, some of us were in university already. And now my, I think my, one of my brothers was supposed to get into school and then he borrowed some money and, you know, put him to school. And now it was getting close to when he would pay that money. And there was no, we, we, he didn't know where or how that money was going to come. And then, you know, as family devotion, every morning we'll keep praying, oh God, supply, you know, we just kept praying and praying by his message. One day, one of my, my eldest brother traveled to Lagos. And then, somehow, he went to Surulere. I think he, um, whether he missed the road or something, he shall went to Surulere and then saw a place where there was chaos. So he went close and saw one of my daddy's friends. He was, you know, ah, so he was ah, sir. Ah, that's ah, okay, what happened? So somebody hit his car and then they just talked. He now looked at him and said, are you not Mr. Steven on that um, and son? He said, yes. He said, yes. He said, ah. He said, I've been looking for your father for, for over 10 years. He said, your father did something good for me when he was at the Koi police station. He said, and I said, I will repay him for his good. And I have been looking for anybody that knows him, and I have not seen. He said, today I have seen his son. He forgot about the car that was bashed. He said, follow me to my house. And he went inside and brought an envelope of 25,000 naira in that envelope. And that was the exact amount my father needed to pay for what he was owing. He brought out that envelope and gave him. He said, when you get home, give it to your dad and tell him that so, so, so and so person, that he did good for so, so, so and so time, said I should give him this. And I remember that day in our living room, when that envelope came, my brother had not opened it. We don't know what was inside. And my father opened it and saw the money. I started and my dad broke down. I've never seen a man crying. But I so my father crying because of the message of God and he said this is the exact amount that I needed to offset my debt for my son who just went to school it tells you that those little prayers that you are praying and you are thinking that God doesn't hear that look he's crossing something somewhere who could have told that someone somewhere in Lagos would have connected with someone somewhere and to have done that miracle if not that the Holy Spirit had to move uh, and began to do that connection when you lay your burdens onto the Lord when you rely on him just let him do his work if he wanted you to walk, he would have created you on the first day. And he would have said, assist me. Since he didn't create you on the first day, he created you on the sixth day when there was rest. Why not rest? And let him do the work. God, if I, if I start telling you testimonies of my own personal life, of the, how we, we have seen God move. Oh my goodness. God is faithful. God is faithful. Confession activates the power of the word of God to manifest in your life. So put God's word in your mouth. Somebody just stand up right now. Stand up right now wherever you are. And begin to put God's words in your mouth. Put God's word in your mouth. Put God's word in your mouth. I know, look, every one of us have challenges. There is something we are believing, we are trusting for. Put God's words in your mouth. And begin to speak. God laid a word in my heart. He said he's bringing restoration for somebody. He said he's bringing restoration for someone here this morning. That you are feeling like you have lost everything. You are feeling like opportunities that you have wasted. You are feeling like there are things that you should have done that you didn't do. And you are feeling like your, your years have been wasted. But God is saying it doesn't matter how old you are. I am bringing restoration. <laughs> Even though you started at 18 or at 20 or at 50 or at 60. It is your season of, of starting. So open your mouth right now and begin to pray. Begin to put God's words in your mouth. Begin to put God's words in your mouth. For God is restoring to you everything that the conquer wants and the Palma worms have eaten up everything that has been stolen from you everything that looks like uh, is seemingly bad uh, but the Bible said that from that situation it will bring up a greater weight of his glory that that thing that looks like a stumbling block God is going to use it to refine you to modify you uh, he's going to use it to, to do something beautiful in your life that when you look at your life you will say oh God uh, I thank you for your
your mercy. Oh God, I thank you for your goodness. Oh God, I thank you for your grace. Oh God, I thank you for your power. Somebody begin to pray. Keep praying. Begin to pray and say, Father, help me to enter into your rest. Help me to enter into your rest. To rest from all my worries. To rest from all my anxiety. To rest from all my troubles. To rest from all my doubts. Help me to enter into your rest. For I enter into your rest. Be keep praying. Say, I enter into the rest of God. I enter into the rest of God. I enter into the rest of God. I don't labor. I don't labor no more. But I enter into the finished work of Jesus. Because I know that he has completed it at the cross of Calvary. My healing is completed. My provision is taken care of. Everything about me is taken care of. I don't need to worry anymore. Because Jesus has taken away my burden. He has taken away my cares. He has taken away my sorrows. I live from the place of victory. I enter in the rest of God. I manifest from the rest of God. Somebody needs to pray. I enter his rest. I enter his rest. I enter his rest. I enter his rest. My faith is activated. My faith is activated. Le Kupra Hanta Legabo. My faith is activated. Let him broko shanta legabo. Let Perepo sing the Himahata. Bako broko shinga palagata. Embro no siga behind the legabos. In the Labashe Kaparamazuka lepegate. Habakato broko shanta legabo. Mene broko singe pragata bagaba. Him broko shanta lagaba. Halabashe ke broko sege behinte ke bedosa. Him brodo shanta bahalege bon. I worship. O Jokwe Raja. I worship. Shira kudi kwe. Halaka sege bedosa. I worship. O Jokwe Raja. I worship Imbro Samaya Bagalo, Imbe la Mahana, Samaya Bado, Sabakala, Halaya, Ie Makarabo, Imbre Shanabade, Ie Mahale, Samataya Pakatapo, Imbro Shia Mahala, Imbre Samahado, Mene Palapato, Sekepe, Imbe la Bahara, Yabale, Imbro Kosovo. I worship you all. Hey, I'm a cabalot. In my life, I say, I'm a man. I worship, 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 I The one that consumes our sacrifice with his fire. Somebody is written up a sacrifice of worship to God this morning. I worship with your kuweriata. I am a dekebo sula habadekebo. I worship you, dear uncle de kuwe. I worship you, God. I worship you, God. I bow down before you, my Savior. Iyala paye. I bring to you the sacrifice of my praise. 
there is healing in this house this morning. If you are believing God for healing, <laughs> it's a time for you to raise your worship. Don't pray, don't pray, don't pray. Just raise your worship. Because there is a God that consumes that sacrifice with fire. He's going to take that sacrifice of your worship and he's going to replace it with healing. In the pursuit of the soul, whatever you're believing God for this morning, this is the atmosphere in the Lima Hatapaya. For God has moved his hand already. You need to move your hand and get hold of what God has given to you. Somebody needs to move. Raise your voice. Shut up your face. Raise your voice and worship. I worship. I worship. I worship. I worship. I worship. Woo. I worship. I worship. I enter to the holy of holy. I enter through the blood of the Lamb. I enter to worship you only. I enter to honor I am. I enter to the holies of holy. I enter holies of holy. I enter to the I enter through the blood, through the blood of the Lamb. I enter to worship you only. I enter to worship. I enter to worship. I enter to worship. I enter to worship. To honor I am. If you're sick in your body, just put your hands wherever you, wherever that you're feeling the symptoms of that sickness. The healing hands of God has been released upon us here this morning. And there is a rain of healing. There's a rain of healing. There's a rain of healing. Kepo shaliba hande peke subro koto bahala ha. Eh ya makuse kepe ketea. Wherever you are right now, receive your healing. Receive your healing. In the name of Jesus. Receive your healing. In the name of Jesus. Receive your healing. In the name of Jesus. Receive your healing. Eh palabato se kepo. I cast out that demon responsible for that sickness right now. In the name of Jesus. I cast out that headache. I cast out that fibroid. I cast out that childlessness. Whatsoever is the root cause of that ailment, I cast it out right now. In the name of Jesus. And I'm going to pray for restoration. I decree over you that there is restoration in the name of Jesus. Restoration. Everything that the canker worms and the palmer worms have eaten up. I decree that this month of November, you shall experience restoration. You have looked at January till this time and you have asked yourself, what have I achieved? But God is giving you restoration in the name of Jesus. God is giving you speed in the name of Jesus. I decree over you that you experience the message of God. For mercy has spoken over you in the places of judgment. Mercy has spoken over you in the name of Jesus. The hand of God has been released to bless you, to change your situation, to move in your environment. In the name of Jesus, I decree that your water is blessed. In the name of Jesus, your food is blessed. In the name of Jesus, you smell like the field that God has blessed them. In the name of Jesus, 
is uh, of your team of congratulations because God has done for you exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ever think of or imagine in the name of Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus. Go ahead, go ahead. Let her push Put your hands together for Jesus. Thank you. God bless you. Come to see you.